Hey everyone, and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. I am at the Lars Anderson Auto Museum in Brookline, Massachusetts. And well, today would have been German Car Day, but due to the circumstances, it was canceled. Now, German Car Day always falls on the same day as Father's Day. And ironically, here I am with a Volkswagen. This vehicle would have qualified to be in the show. And also, it just so happens to be my dad's brand new 2019 Volkswagen Golf All Track. Sadly, this is the final model year of the Golf All Track here in the United States, as Volkswagen is going to primarily focus on crossovers moving forward. Now, to give a little bit of a backstory as to how my dad chose a station wagon over a crossover, we have to start from the beginning. Just like you, he watched a lot of car reviews, and we began the process of elimination. Started off with the Subaru Forester, then the Subaru Outback, ironically, which compares very well to the All Track, and a number of other crossovers on the market that would replace his Toyota RAV4. Now, he did not like the RAV4. He was reluctantly looking at another crossover. And I'm thinking, you know what? He does not like driving bigger vehicles. He does not like driving a crossover because of the lack of handling and driving dynamics. He wants to get back into a car. And I led him in the direction of the Volkswagen Alltrack because it's a station wagon, so it's still practical. It has a lot of cargo room that compares very well to a lot of subcompact and even some compact crossovers and it gives him that car-like feel when he's behind the wheel. So that's how this vehicle really became the number one option. So in this video, we're gonna check out the 2019 Volkswagen Golf Alltrack and also see why you don't need to buy a crossover to make a wise purchasing decision. Now, before I get in this review, I'd like to thank my dad for giving me the keys to his new Volkswagen on Father's Day, no less. And I also wanna thank Quirk Volkswagen in Braintree, Massachusetts. They're my go-to dealer for all my Volkswagen reviews, and they're also the dealer where we bought this Alltrack. They're a great group of people, very friendly, and whether it's buying or service, they make everything hassle-free. So, huge shout out to them. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. One of the saddest headlines in the automotive industry since the new millennium has been the gradual extinction of station wagons here in the United States. Brands have tried to resurrect them on numerous occasions, and for the most part, within a three to five year window, they all get discontinued. The Volkswagen Golf Alltrack is no exception, and here we are in 2020 at the end of the road for the best alternative to a crossover in the $30,000 price range. The goal for this station wagon was to blur the lines between a car and SUV, with additional ground clearance, bolder styling with plastic cladding, while also offering all-wheel drive as a standard feature. Starting off with pricing, the Golf Alltrack comes in with the base price just under $27,000. But if you option for the SEL trim, you'd be looking at a price tag around $35,000. However, remaining 2019 models are being heavily discounted, with the Alltrack S entering the $22,000 to $24,000 territory. Compared to the Volkswagen Golf hatchback, the Alltrack sits an inch and a half higher at 6.9 inches of ground clearance. While this lifted station wagon will get outclassed by most crossovers in terms of off-road capability, it's more versatile than other Golf variants and family sedans. Up front, what I appreciate the most is that despite sharing the same front fascia as the Golf Hatchback and GTI, Volkswagen added rugged styling cues that gives the station wagon its own unique look in the lineup. For the lower portion of the front bumper, not only is there aggressive angles around the fog light housing, but the silver painted trim that contrasts very nicely with the mesh grille and plastic cladding 
differentiates the Alltrack from its closest siblings. The S trim will be equipped with LED daytime running lights with halogen headlamps and fog lights. But if you go with the SE or SEL trim, you'll have full LED adaptive headlights for better illumination at night. Moving over to the side profile, the S and SE trims will be sitting on 17 inch alloy wheels. But if you purchase the SEL, you'll have the upgraded 18s. Of course, the biggest difference from the sport wagon is the plastic cladding around the wheel arches, giving the Alltrack off-road capable design cues you find on most crossovers today. One of my favorite details with this wagon are the silver painted side mirror caps, which when paired with Tornado Red, almost gives the Alltrack an Audi-like presence. You'll get integrated turn signal indicators, and coming standard is blind spot detection for added safety. Coming around to the back, all models will be equipped with LED taillights for an upscale look, but these are also found on the GTI and Golf as well. Despite not being seen as a sports vehicle, you do get dual exhaust outlets, which certainly adds an aggressive look to the rear of the Alltrack. But overall, the silhouette and road presence is so much more appealing than crossovers, particularly in this price range. And because of that, there has been a cult following for this lifted station wagon over the last handful of years. Under the hood, the Golf Alltrack is powered by a 1.8 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that puts out 168 horsepower and 199 pound feet of torque and is paired with a six speed DSG. However, if you prefer rowing through the gears yourself, Volkswagen does offer a six speed manual transmission. This station wagon wouldn't be an alternative to crossovers without Volkswagen's four motion all wheel drive system that gives drivers more confidence when encountering winter conditions or the off-road. For fuel economy, you can expect to receive right around 21 miles per gallon in the city and 30 miles per gallon on the highway. Okay, so we are now behind the wheel of the Alltrack and let's talk about driving dynamics, handling, and acceleration. Now, I watched a lot of reviews on this vehicle. I wanted to give my dad a heads up as to what he could expect uh, from the Alltrack when he test drove it and no reviewer could give me a straight answer as to how this vehicle actually drove compared to, say, a Volkswagen GTI or other Volkswagens in the lineup. Some people say that the steering is tight, others say it's loose. And my question is, that's based on what? Is that based on, uh, you know, tightness compared to, say, a Volkswagen Jetta or a Tiguan? Or is the steering loose compared to, say, a GTI? Now what I can say is that the steering is very direct. It's not tight like the GTI, and that really comes with the lack of a sports tuned suspension. But because this vehicle doesn't have a sports tuned suspension, the Alltrack is very enjoyable to drive. It's very pleasant. It's a different driving experience. Uh, what I would say is comfortable and relaxing. You know, when I drive the GTI, I'm always bending the wheel like I want to go speed, I want to, you know, take corners really sharp. Whereas this is like a nice cruiser, it's a nice daily driver, consumer vehicle where, you know, when you're driving, you want to have an enjoyable driving experience uh, when you're going to work or, you know, traveling on the weekends. And that's exactly what the Alltrack offers. Now, when it comes to handling, I'd put the Alltrack very high up on the list of best handling cars in its segment and when you compare it to other crossovers. Um, for me, the handling is a little tighter than, say, the Subaru Outback. It's better than the American rivals. I think you can make the argument, well, Japanese make some good handling cars as well. But this is definitely up there compared to crossovers. It's very car-like. And with that, you get a very car-like driving experience despite the fact that you're higher up off the ground. Now, seating position is a little higher compared to, say, the Golf and the GTI, and you certainly feel that. But this is not much different than most family sedans on the market. But also, of course, you have the practicality aspect. Because of the station wagon, you have the same cargo room as most compact crossovers on the market and significantly better than a lot of subcompact crossovers in this price range. Because, all right, even if we're paying MSRP at $28,000 for the S, that's top trim for a lot of subcompact crossovers. And, okay, maybe you get you know, heated seats or ventilated seats for some of those subcompact crossovers. But when it comes to features, there's not much of a difference. I have three level heated seats. I have the safety features. So in my mind, I think that this vehicle is more practical. The all track is more practical. It looks better than a subcompact crossover. And I just think that when it comes to 
uh, you know, its price point and the value proposition, it's a heck of a lot better than going with, you know, a Buick Encore, a Chevy Trax, a Ford EcoSport, EcoSport, whatever it's, it's called these days. It's better than those subcompact crossovers. I think you can make the argument, well, I could get a lot more with a compact crossover like a Toyota RAV4, maybe even a Volkswagen Tiguan. Uh, and and I, I'd give it to you there. I think that maybe you, know, you can make the argument, well, you get more cargo space, you get more interior room. But if you don't have a family, if you don't have you know children in the back or you don't have people in the back of your car all the time, then there is no point going with the crossover. You're spending extra for things you don't need. I think a lot of people buy into the crossover aspect. You know, brands have done a great job marketing the crossovers to people and really, you know, have made people spend extra money that they don't need, don't necessarily need to. Uh, the station wagon is just fine. And that's the way I feel with the Alltrack. Even with just this being a base trim, it's enough. It, it's totally enough. You don't need the extras. I mean, maybe you want to have uh, the panoramic moonroof. You want to have, you know, other, you know, minor features like full LED adaptive headlights. You can go with that if you really want to. Uh, with a discount, you're paying under $30,000 for that. But I just think that if we're speaking truly with the, when it comes to MSRP, this is better than most compact crossovers or subcompact crossovers right now on the market. Now we're going to do a zero to 60 acceleration here. All right, we're at 65. Now when it comes to acceleration, what I notice is that from the zero to 60 pull, it is slow compared to the GTI, you don't get that initial torque. But once you hit 40 miles an hour, this thing just starts taking off. You know, you go from 40 and then it just jumps to 60 and 65 rather quickly. So if you're behind a slower driver, you have the ability to get around them safely. Also with the DSG transmission, you get a very linear acceleration and the gear shifts are very smooth. By far the best automatic transmission you're gonna find in this price range. It's better than a lot of automatics, uh, you know, at 20 to $30,000. And it's significantly better than the CVTs that, are, that the Japanese and even some American manufacturers offer. So if you're looking for closer to an enthusiastic driving experience, or uh, at least when it comes to more traditional shifting, then the DSG is by far the best option on the market that you're gonna find in this segment because it has that luxury aspect to it. It adds the luxury aspect of the Alltrack, and even though a lot of people would say that the Alltrack or Volkswagens in general aren't luxurious, it's an entry level luxury experience that a lot of the competitors are not going to offer. It's that way of getting into German luxury, it's that way to get into European driving styling or driving style, and to me, this is the gateway to an Audi, to a BMW, and it's that gateway to better vehicles for you in the future. Inside the Alltrack S, you're greeted by manually adjustable heated leatherette seats for both the driver and passenger, providing a very comfortable experience during road trips. If you're familiar with Volkswagen products, you'll recognize the analog gauges and digital display in the center, which shows fuel efficiency numbers, including fuel range, driving duration, a digital speedometer, and also from here, you can access your safety systems, where you can turn them on or off but I recommend keeping these features on for peace of mind. Moving over to the infotainment system, we have the 6-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. While you won't have onboard navigation, smartphone adaptability will give you Google Maps and Waze. There'll be quick access buttons mounted on either side of the screen for more convenient access to different menus and screens. Just like with most new Volkswagen models, you'll be able to monitor fuel efficiency and there'll be tips on how to maximize fuel range by not running the fog lights during the day and limiting climate control usage. You'll get a rear backup camera, however, you won't have trajectory. As we work our way down towards the center console, you'll find the buttons and dials for the climate control settings and three level heated seats for a more traditional interior layout. Below will be a cubby for a smartphone with a USB input. For the center console itself, you'll have the button for the drive mode selector, which will be displayed on the touchscreen. Of course, 
with the all track being year on versatile, there will be an off road mode which engages hill descent control if you encounter snow or icy road conditions. And rounding out the front seating area for the center storage compartment, you will have enough room for smaller items, but certainly not a place you'd want to store your smartphone. Now for passengers in the back, we're going to start off with the driver's side and I adjusted the seat to someone of my height around 5'5", and I have plenty of legroom to work with, but I do want to be fair and say the Super Outback offers more legroom. So if you have a growing family, going with the Outback probably makes more sense. Although if you're comparing the two and you do have a family, I would say look at the Subaru Forester because you can fit a third person comfortably. And that's exactly what we're going to try out in this vehicle. Now for the center seat, I feel the same way that I do in my GTI. There is just no way you could fit somebody comfortably in the center if you have three people back here. It's just not practical. Uh, the Golf Alltrack is still a compact station wagon no matter how you look at it. And I have to say, there's not a lot of placements for my feet. The center hump is very aggressive. And I do think that if you do have more than two people in the back row uh, on a daily basis, the Golf All Track is not going to work in that way. Now, again, for my dad, it works just fine. I think for people who just maybe have one or two people back here, you're going to be okay. But I do think for a growing family, you're going to want to look at maybe a compact crossover or a Subaru Forester. I think that would make more sense. And then on the passenger side, I adjusted the seat all the way back, and I have about one or two inches of room here to work with, even though this isn't the most comfortable. I prefer to see a little bit further up. I like having some space. So definitely keep that in mind, especially where if you are looking at maybe a compact crossover and a compact uh, station wagon, maybe going with the Super Outback makes more sense or maybe the Super Forester or whatever other crossover you're looking at. But if you don't need to worry about the second row, I still would go with the station wagon over a crossover any day. I also want to point out rear headroom for a second. Now, obviously, this is nowhere close to being a crossover, but there's enough room here. I think people are maybe 5'9", five, 5'10", five, could be comfortable and not to slouch. However, I do think people over that would hit their head on the headliner, but this vehicle is really a family car. So if you do have kids, they're going to be just fine. They're not going to be claustrophobic. I think for just four people in the vehicle altogether, I think this is definitely enough space for all occupants. Also back here, you do get two rear air vents along a little dial that controls how much air flow is coming through back here. And rounding up the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now for rear cargo space, you can expect to see right around 30 cubic feet of rear cargo room. And that's what the rear seats folded up. With the rear seats folded down, that space more than doubles in size to 66 cubic feet. So it's one of the reasons why station wagons are a viable alternative to crossovers if you don't want to be like your neighbor. Now, when you look at the price range for the Alltrack, right now they're right around $28,000. However, they are on a discount. So you can get one for right around $23,000, $24,000 as of the day that I'm filming this. And when you look at subcompact crossovers in that same price range, the Alltrack is way more practical. But of course, when you compare it to its bigger sibling like the Volkswagen Tiguan, also the Toyota RAV4, Honda CRV, and the Subaru Outback, of course the Alltrack will get outclassed. But when you consider the price point and also the practicality and the fact that you're not driving a crossover, I think this is one of the best options you can go with on the market right now under $30,000 for a starting price point. Also back here, you do get cubby areas on either side of the floor. So if you have any smaller items that might get thrown around like water bottles or maybe even detail equipment, you can store that right there and you'll be just fine. Now also underneath the floor mat, you will find your spare tire and you can also use that for extra cargo area if you really wanted to. Now also I like too with the station wagon is that you do get quick release latches on either side of the cargo area. And by simply tugging on them, the rear seats will fold conveniently and effortlessly. So now you have 66 cubic feet of rear cargo room to work with and it took no effort at all. And lastly, you do get a rear cargo cover which keeps all your valuable items out of sight. So if you leave your vehicle unattended, you have that peace of mind knowing that no one is going to peek in and steal what you have. So at the end of the day, would I recommend buying an Alltrack? And I have to say, absolutely. It's one of the reasons why I, I really pushed my dad into going in the direction of buying a station wagon because you still get that car-like driving feel 
We have a nice soft suspension, so we go over bumps very well, and up here in New England, the roads are horrible. So you're gonna wanna have a car that can handle those bumps really well and just provide a more comfortable driving experience overall. But I do think, though, is, is that if you are more of a enthusiast driver, then you're gonna wanna go with the GTI. The GTI is gonna be better. You still get that practicality because the hatchback, it'll be better suited for you if you prefer you know, going around corners very tightly, accelerating. But if you're the type of person that is taking a car out on a daily basis to work, Monday through Friday commutes, and maybe even going on road trips to outside the state, then the Alltrack is certainly a great vehicle to go with. It really is. I, I just, I think that it's, it's the best option you can go with if you don't want to be like your neighbor. And I have plenty of neighbors that own crossovers and I can truly boast and say that I have everything they have, but it's not as high up off the ground and it isn't as practical as their vehicles, but I have that cargo room. I have the same off-road capability. I have everything they have, it's just a little different. And that's re the reason why at the end of this test drive, I would highly recommend going with a station wagon over a subcompact or compact crossover. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys next time.